Hey everyone, ready for a deep dive into something that's weirdly common, but like surprisingly complicated at the same time? I know what you mean. We're talking all about ticklishness today. Sounds fun. You know that feeling like when a feather just barely brushes your skin? Yeah. Some spots make you just like burst out giggling. Right. While others make you kind of twitch without even meaning to. Uh-huh. And then there are the spots that just feel super weird. Uh, so, so why exactly do we react in all these different ways? Well, that's a question that's actually puzzled scientists for like centuries. No kidding. And today we're going to explore that very question. Exactly. We've got this really cool new study from the Scandinavian Journal of Psychology that looks at ticklishness in a whole new way. That's right. And this one isn't about like the usual tickle spots you always hear about. Not the feet. Nope, not the feet, not the armpits either. Interesting, so what are they looking at? This study focuses on the parts of your body that are exposed when you're wearing a swimsuit. Hold on, a swimsuit focused tickle study. Exactly, it's a totally new angle on tickle research. Okay, you've got my attention. So what did they actually do in this study? Well, they got together 57 university students. Okay. A mix of men and women. Got it. All between the ages of 19 and 26. Makes sense. And each person was tickled with a feather on different parts of their body. Yeah. And they carefully watched and recorded their reactions. So like whether they laughed or twitched. Exactly. And even how ticklish they said they felt. But wait a sec, why use a feather? Why not just use fingers? Good question. You've actually touched on like a super important point about tickling. Oh. There are two main types of tickling. Really? Nismesis and gargalysis. Those are some big words. I know, right? But nismesis is that light feathery kind of touch that maybe makes you shiver or twitch a bit. Okay, I get that. Gargalysis is the more like intense kind of tickling. Like when someone's really digging their fingers in. Yeah, the kind that can have you bursting out laughing. <laughs> okay, so I see why the feather matters. Exactly. By using a feather, the researchers could focus on that gentler nismesis response. And study it more precisely. Right. And by focusing on nismesis, they could see, like, where people are most ticklish. And if men and women react differently. Yeah, exactly. Okay, now I need to know, where are these tickle hot spots? Well, the results were actually pretty consistent between men and women. Interesting. The most ticklish areas were the ankles. Okay. Knees. Uh-huh. Inner thighs and legs. Wow, all the leg spots. Pretty much. Then the sides of the upper body. Makes sense. The stomach. Oh yeah, that one gets me. Elbows and upper arms. Oh, huh, interesting. And even the neck and shoulders. So basically, a whole lot of ticklers territory. It seems that way. And you said these were the same for men and women? Yeah, the locations were pretty similar. Hmm. So no big differences there. Well, not in terms of where they're ticklish. Oh. So there's a butt coming. But the study found some really interesting differences in how men and women react to being tickled. The tickle gender gap. Knew it. Yeah, it's a real thing. So first, let's talk about laughter. OK, let's do it. The study found that women laughed way more than men when they were being tickled. No matter who was doing the tickling. It didn't seem to matter whether it was a man or a woman tickling them. Interesting. So we ladies are the true Tickle Giggle Champions. It seems that way, yeah. But why would that be? Did the study say anything about that? Well, it's probably a bunch of factors, but they think social conditioning could play a role. So, like, women are just encouraged to be more expressive with their emotions. Yeah, including laughter. Whereas men are more likely to hold back. Right. It's <laughs> like there's a different unspoken rule for how men and women are supposed to react. Even to something as simple as tickling. Exactly. But what about those involuntary muscle contractions? You know, those twitches and squirms we do when we're being tickled. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Any gender differences there? This is where things get really fascinating. They found that these involuntary muscle contractions were way more common when the tickler and the person being tickled were of opposite genders. So when a man tickles woman, or the other way around. Exactly. You see more of those squirmy reactions. I wonder why that would be. Well, one theory is that these muscle contractions might be like a leftover from a really old defense mechanism. A defense mechanism. Yeah, like trying to brush away a bug or something irritating. So even though you might be enjoying the tickling, 
your body is still kind of on guard. Yeah, like ready to swat away the threat, especially if it's coming from someone of the opposite sex. That's wild. Like our cave person instincts kicking in. It's possible. It suggests that ticklishness, especially between men and women, might connect to some deeper social dynamics and subconscious reactions. That is super interesting. Yeah. This is blowing my mind already. We've only just scratched the surface. But before we dive into those social dynamics, yeah. there's one more thing I'm curious about. What is it? The study also looked at subjective ticklishness. You know, how ticklish people feel they are. Right. Did that match up with the laughter and the involuntary movements? Actually, it did. The study found that people said they felt most ticklish when they were being tickled by someone of the opposite gender. Which lines up with those muscle contractions, too. Exactly. So it's not just about how ticklish we are objectively, but how we experience that ticklishness. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be influenced by gender, too. It really does. And what's so fascinating about this study is that it suggests that ticklishness might actually be this super complex interplay between biology and social interaction. So it's not just a simple reflex. Nope. It looks like it's shaped by our evolutionary history, our social conditioning, and the way we interact with others. It's like this incredible mix of nature and nurture, all triggered by a gentle touch. It really is. But we've only just begun to untangle this whole ticklish tapestry. For sure. What else did this study find about the different ways we react to tickling? Well, let's look at the different kinds of laughter they saw. Okay. They found a distinction that could give us even more clues about the social side of ticklishness. What was it? They noticed that not all laughter is created equal when it comes to tickling. They saw a difference between what seemed like genuinely amused laughter and laughter that seemed more forced or strained. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so like sometimes you just kind of chuckle even though you don't really think something's funny. Oh, totally. Like yeah. when you're just trying to be polite. Exactly. And the study actually found that this kind of less genuine laughter was more common when the tickler and the person being tickled were the same gender. Hmm. So we're more likely to fake a laugh when it's somewhat of our own gender tickling us. It's like even tickle fights have social rules. It really seems that way. Why do you think that would be? Maybe we just feel more obligated to laugh even if it's not really that funny when it's someone of the same gender. Maybe. It could be a way to keep things from getting awkward or to like maintain that social harmony. Yeah, that makes sense. It's almost like tickling especially with someone of the same gender, involves this element of social performance. Interesting point. Like, we're following a script for how we're supposed to react. Well, exactly. Yeah. It just adds to the idea that tickling isn't just about the physical feeling, but also how we understand and react to it in a social context. I agree. So we've got genuine laughter, potentially fake laughter. What other cool responses did they find? What else did they see? Well, remember those involuntary muscle contractions? The IMCs? Yeah, those twitches. The researchers think they might actually have a more specific purpose than just being random twitches. Really? Like they're actually communicating something? Potentially. Yeah. If we think about tickling as this playful interaction, almost like a mock fight. Yeah, like a playful little battle. Right. The researchers think these IMCs could be a way of signaling submission or vulnerability. During those playful encounters. Exactly. So it's like a nonverbal way of saying, all right, all right, you got me. I give up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, no need to tickle me anymore. That's fascinating. Uh -huh. It adds a whole other dimension to tickle fights. Right. Especially since you said those IMCs were stronger when it was a man and a woman tickling each other. Right. So maybe because in those situations, there's more potential for misinterpreting signals or things getting misconstrued. Yeah, it's like the social stakes are higher, so those subtle physical cues become even more important. I see what you mean. So those movements might be super important for navigating those interactions, even if we're not consciously aware of it. Exactly. The social dynamics are totally different between same gender and opposite gender tickling. This is so cool. Tickling is way more than just a silly reflex. I know. It's this whole intricate dance of biology and social cues and laughter and even potential submission signals. And to think it all starts with a feather lightly brushing against your skin. It really highlights how much we still have to learn about human touch and how we interact with each other. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've talked about the study set up, the tickle hot spots, the different types of laughter, and even those interesting involuntary muscle contractions. Yeah, we've covered a lot. What's the big takeaway? What conclusions did the researchers come to after looking at all this tickle data? Well, they concluded that the best way to understand ticklishness is to see it as a blend of two things, a biological reflex and a form of social communication. So it's not just one or the other, it's both. Exactly. It's this fascinating combination. That makes a lot of sense. 
So uh -huh. on the one hand, we're wired to react to a light touch in certain ways. Yeah, like with those muscle contractions that might have evolved to protect us from bugs or something. But then on the other hand, tickling also seems to tap into something really social. Something that affects how we interact with other people. Especially when it comes to laughter. Right, laughter is such a key part of how we connect with others. It's not just a physical response. For sure. It's how we engage with the other person, acknowledge what they're doing, and show that we're part of the interaction. It's communication. Exactly. And we've seen that it's not just any laughter either. We've got genuine laughter, polite laughter, and even those muscle contractions that could be subtle signals of submission or vulnerability. It really adds a whole other layer of depth and meaning to those tickle fights. Yeah, it really is amazing that something like tickling can tell us so much about how our bodies and our social behaviors work. I know, right? <laughs> and how we laugh when we're being tickled is like a big part of that communication. It's not just our body's automatic response. It's a way of connecting with the person tickling us, showing them we get what they're doing. Like we're playing along. Exactly. And as we saw, it's not all the same kind of laughter either. Right. We've got the real deal when something's actually funny. Right. <laughs> then there's the polite chuckle when we're just trying to keep things smooth. Makes sense. And then those muscle twitches, which could be a whole secret language of submission or vulnerability. It's like a hidden conversation going on underneath the tickling. And all this complexity just from a feather brushing against your skin. It really shows us how much there still is to learn about human touch and yeah. the subtle ways we interact. So how do we actually use these insights? How can yeah. we apply this to our own ticklish lives? Well, I think this study tells us to pay more attention to the little details of ticklishness. Not just dismiss it as a silly reflex. Right. It's a glimpse into our social interactions, that mix of biology and behavior. So next time someone tickles us, we shouldn't just laugh it off without thinking. Well, exactly. We should really tune in to how we're reacting. Yeah. What kind of laughter is coming out? Are we twitching, squirming? All those little details. And think about what those reactions might mean. Both for ourselves. And for the person doing the tickling. It's like you said before, it adds a whole new layer of meaning to those tickle fights. Absolutely. It makes you wonder if ticklishness really is partly a social signal, what does our laughter say to the other person? That's a great question. Is it real amusement? Is it a polite cover-up to avoid awkwardness? Maybe it's a playful way of showing vulnerability. Or maybe it's all of those things mixed together. It really makes you think. It definitely does. And for anyone who wants to really dig into the details of this research, yeah. we highly recommend checking out the full study in the Scandinavian Journal of Psychology. It's a really fascinating read. Well, that brings us to the end of our deep dive into the world of ticklishness. A surprisingly complex world, it turns out. We explored a groundbreaking study, mapped out those tickle hotspots, decoded the gender differences, and even thought about the deeper meaning behind our laughter and those involuntary muscle contractions. Who would have thought a simple feather could unlock so many insights? Until next time, keep that curiosity alive and keep exploring those everyday things that often hold extraordinary secrets. And remember, always be mindful of boundaries and consent when it comes to tickling. That's important. Not everyone enjoys it, and that's totally fine. Absolutely. Happy tickling, everyone.